Thank you, God. Beautiful. God is in the midst. God is in the midst. Why don't you stand with me, if you would, and, and, and let's share 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning at verse 13. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Since you call on a father who judges each man's work impartially, live your lives as strangers here in reverent fear. Father, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the privilege to be right here, right now, to be reminded of the wonderment of the life you've called us to. God, I pray that as, as these next few moments unfold, you will be glorified. Father, we love you, but we know that you love us even more. Have your way. Move me out of the way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Man, what a good-looking bunch of people, man. Most of you guys clean up really well, too. It's really great. <laughs> I, uh, I, a lot of you maybe know that, that a certain, uh, an important time in my life, we lived in Gilman Bottoms. And uh, special year. I, I was there, uh, I remember the first day of school, going to Mallory grade school. I remember that as if it was yesterday. The old wooden school. I remember learning to ride a bike on the on the what was a dirt road then. I think it may even be paved. Is that paved? <laughs> yeah, I drove. They have television. Wow. <laughs> now, see, I wasn't really going. I mean, I just. It was just. But as I, uh, uh, sometime back after we, we came back into the area, I drove down through there and I thought I heard the Jefferson music, you know, moving on up. <laughs> but um, one of the things I, I recall uh, in, in those times, the, the, that period of, of life, uh, and you know, Easter's on the way. And, and as I was, I, I have to tell you, I was just strolling through sermons. And I thought, Lord, what do you want me to preach this place? What do I preach? And this sermon just jumped out. Let, let me let me say, my wife said, what, why are you preaching that? You know, she, this, we, I'm just telling her, I said, this is what I'm going to share. And, and uh, I said, well, I, I, don't, I can't explain it. All I know is, it, when I was, I was looking and praying, and it jumped out, and there it was. And then this came to me. I remember there were two or three years getting ready for church, or going to church on Easter Sunday morning. And for whatever the reason, my mom thought it was a great idea to put me in, in really nice, neat Sunday go-to-meeting clothes and put white bucks on my feet and said, now don't you get those dirty. And I'm six years old. I'm not going to get my white bucks dirty, mom. You know, it's like, what a challenge is that? But put a put a white shoes on a kid that is in the mud most of his life, all the way through. You know, if there's a mud hole, I intended to split right down through it. You know, that was the way. I mean, it's just like what a challenge is that. Well, let me get you to appreciate something. Why would I even mention that? Well, here's why. That passage of scripture that we shared. You see, God has called us to live a holy life in a filthy world. 
it's almost as if he put white bucks on us and sent us on our way and said, don't you get those dirty, boy. But he didn't just do it and leave us alone. He gave us a, 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 a resource to be able to, exp you, you know, I don't believe God would call us. He wouldn't say, I want you to be holy and then it not be able to happen. Why, that would be a lie, wouldn't it? Why would he do that? Why would, why would God set us up to fail? Well, he didn't. He didn't set us up to fail. He made himself wonderfully, abundantly, completely available to us if we'll tap into him, if we'll just be in tune with him, if, if we have relationship with him and we are able to follow him one step at a time, he'll show us, he'll do what only he can do in us, that we will be a holy people. And, and we won't be a holy people so they'll pat us on the back. We won't be a holy people so that they can say, oh, wow. Oh, wow. What a God we serve. That's what he wants. He wants the glory. He deserves the glory. There's only one that deserves the glory. And, and it's wonderful to recognize and appreciate that he's called us to live a holy life. He's put us in this world. And by the way, I know you know the world is a mess. It is broken. It is twisted. It's turned upside down. And it seems like every, it's not even day by day. It's almost hour by hour it gets crazier and crazier it's hard to believe how completely twisted it's gotten but God hasn't even flinched he's not even flinched he's not scratching his head wondering what to do he's not he's not hiccuped or or or, or he's not set by, back and just oh my what am I going to do next and and where he's not wringing his hands if he wrings his hands it's only because he wants to not because he's in dismay it's, oh no I can't understand he knows exactly what we need he knows exactly what we're going through he understands exactly how to get us where it is we need to go and he knows where we need to go I don't even know where that is but he does and if I'll just trust him and if I'll lean on him I'll figure out how to be this holy person in a filthy dirty world and I believe Peter gave us a little bit of insight in these verses here there's 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 several points so hang with me and I, I told Jim I, I've got till Sunday morning so hang on <laughs> well we got all kinds of time as far as I'm they ain't playing no basketball or anything like that we don't have anything to miss everything just reruns on television now we might get a cold or anyway Lord help us I just think it's interesting that everywhere around we've got this thing going on and we're sitting here clean as a bell I probably shouldn't go like that but we do need to pray there, you know there's there's stuff going on so we need to be, be serious about that but but let me there there's there's a way to be holy and we can't do it ourselves you, you can't be holy by yourself. God's called you to something that you cannot accomplish by yourself. But he's made himself wonderfully available to do that. Okay? In him, then, all of these things are possible. Right? And, and so this thing, notice verse 13. It has all kinds of stuff. Man, I could, I could preach for a, quite a while just verse 13. He says, prepare your minds for action. What does that mean? Prepare your minds for action. Sounds to me like Peter's saying to us, that we need to live life very intentionally. You know, God gave us a heart, but he also gave us a brain. And, and the fact is that when you come to the altar, and I hope that most of us in here are saved. I, I hope we are. And, and, and I recognize that somebody might not be, and that's, boy, you came to the right place. But, but the fact of the matter is you come to the altar and you experience the, 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 the saving grace and power of the, of, of the Holy Spirit sweeping in and the blood of Christ is applied to you. His Holy Spirit reaches into your heart and cleanses you and fills you to overflowing, sanctif sanctifies you completely and you, empowers you and indwells you. But folks, I promise you're still a human being. And you're still going to be confronted with all sorts of decisions all along the way. You're not going to be exempt from that. You're going to be challenged by the realities of life coming at you. No matter how close you get to God, Satan's still going to do what Satan does, and he's going to come at you in every way he can. Don't think he won't. He will. And sometimes it appears the closer you get to God, the more he's attacking. But all the more our God is able. Right? 
so we've got to be very intentional in how we live our lives we've got to be very intent we got to be purposeful we, for example we've got a purpose to be in God's Word we've got a purpose to be in God's house we've got a purpose to be to, to be a, in, in a quiet place with God on a regular basis not just once a week on a Sunday morning or a Sunday evening or or, or, or whenever the baby is sick but but every day of our lives we've got to have some time where we have an intimate experience with him we, we've got to do that intentionally and you know how much of that you'll do as much as you want to do you, you, you know You'll read as much of the Bible as you want to read. You'll pray as much and as long and as deep and as intimately as you want to pray. You'll, you'll learn and grow and develop based on those things. You've got to do that intentionally. Well, I remember there, there, was, there was a time in life before Christ when uh, we, we were invited several years in a row to Pipe's Den to the super, on the Super Bowl weekend friends of ours actually they were from Charleston and, and they would come in to, to pipes in and and it was not a Christian event let me put it that way uh, it was several years and and there was there were a lot of things you know th it was a party setting let me, let me say that there was alcohol drugs things like that involved. and we called it a good time I mean oh wow man what a blast you know that kind of thing like you did well, then we found the Lord. Denise and I found the Lord. And sure enough, Super Bowl weekend comes rolling around. We're brand new Christians. We get the call. Hey, you guys coming to Pipe's Den? No, I don't believe we ought to be a Pipe's Den. It's not a good thing. See, I could have gone. As a matter of fact, I'd actually wish they'd call me. I'd wish they'd call me. I'd love to go hang out with those guys because now I know who I know and I know who I am then I didn't I was still learning I was still growing I was still and I, I, I wonderfully was able to make a real decision wait a minute intentionally I got to pull away from that because you know what I found you go out near the edge it's a lot easier to fall off if you don't even go out there I remember hearing a story one time of a guy that was that he was a champion motocross racer and he, he was he would race on all sorts of tracks and out you know like uh, mountain tracks and road riding mountain bikes and things and and there was this particular trail that it seemed he was the only one that could figure out how to 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 to, to champion that trail guys would just go over the edge they, they just couldn't figure it out or that either that or he was just excelling on past them just just with all sorts of skill and talent well finally they, they were interviewing him and he had won it time and time again they said well we we need to understand how close to the to the edge can you get and still maintain your integrity and get on up the hill you know what he said i don't know i don't go out there intentionally I stay close I stay safe I don't have to prove anything out on the edge I know exactly where I need to be you see what I'm saying we've got to live our lives that way if you put yourself in, a, in an environment and folks just because we get saved just because we we get the anointing and the infilling and, and the, the passion of the Holy Spirit in our life doesn't mean we're exempt and we've got a purpose to be mindful of the situations that we walk into and we've got to allow God to lead us in those things that's what Peter was saying you got to be very intense you got to you got to prepare your mind for action and move in the right direction somebody say amen I'll move on so 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 I like that I, I, I just it, that helps me to be reminded wait a minute I've got a role to play in this thing you, aren't, aren't you aren't you glad that God doesn't just save you and do everything God wants to do in you and then just leave you alone like a, a top like I remember you know remember those tops God you, you, you pump them and pump them and they just you just kind of stand there and watch them spin God doesn't do us like that 
God doesn't just spin us along and, and, and to, until we just fall over. That's not the thing. God has something that he wants to do in us, but he also has given us a role to play. You see, we always have a choice, and intention is a choice. But then, then he says something else. He says, prepare your minds for action. Be self-controlled. Ooh, boy. It's almost like Peter's meddling in my affairs. Be self-controlled. You, you know what he's saying? I believe he's saying that we've got a purpose to allow some balance in our lives. We've, we've got a purpose to not get too carried away in that direction or too carried away in this direction and miss the entire intent of what God's wanting to do in our lives. You see, you get out of balance with all the stuff that's going on, and it's really easy to get out of balance. Come Sunday morning, you just don't feel good, and you rarely go fishing, so you just do. Come, come, come time to pray, and you're really just kind of tired. It's okay. I've got other things. There's something really good on television. And you get twisted. You, you, you get your mind over here when it's supposed to be over here. And if you're not careful, at the same time, now keep, keep something in mind. Have you noticed God saves us, God calls us to, to, to ministry and uses us in however way God wants to use us, and he leaves us right in the middle of the world. He doesn't take us out of the world. Jesus even prayed about that in, in John 17. He, did, he, he intentionally has not removed us from the world. We're still in this thing. So we need to be aware of the world. We need to understand what's going on. We don't need to embrace it as far as agreeing that everything it does because most of what it does is absolutely not what it ought to be. But we need to understand what's going on around us, and that takes a little bit of balance in our thinking. It takes a little bit of balance in our understanding of what's going on. If we get so heavenly-minded, we might end up not being much earthly good. You, you know what I'm saying? But, but if you have to make a mistake, go ahead and make it that way. I think that would be the best way to go. But, but, but you don't have to make that mistake. You can allow God to help you to, to have a self-controlled life so that, so that he can actually use you. You know, somebody used, God used somebody to reach me. God used somebody to reach you. And if they had gotten so twisted, and, and, and not twisted, I don't mean bad twisted, but if they had gotten so confined to their own personal experience, they would have not been used to reach me. You see what I'm saying? There has to be a balance in that. So I believe that's what Peter's saying. There's got to be some self-control in this. There's got to be some intention in that. And then we've got to be able to recognize. We've got to keep. I, I like the next part of the verse. He says, be self-controlled and set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. You know what he's saying? Keep an eye on eternity. Keep an eye on eternity. Be aware eternity is on the way. We're, we're, we're already on the path. We're already positioned for all of eternity. We've got to be mindful of that. We've got to be aware. Do, do you know there's more to life than just what we're living right here, right now? This, we ain't seen nothing yet. We've not even gotten a glimpse of what it can be, folks. This is just barely, barely a glimpse of what God has in store for us. We've got to keep, we've got to be mindful. We've got to keep an eye out for eternity because it's coming. One of these days, Jesus is stepping down out of glory. And I want to be paying attention. Don't you want to be paying attention? I mean, it's probably going to catch me off guard anyway. I'm probably going to be doing something goofy and all that kind of stuff. But I promise you, there's a need to be sensitive to the reality of eternity. You see, we can get awfully caught up in this world. I mean, if, if you're watching the news, you might be close to, you might need a pill or something. It, it's a mess. It, I mean, it'll, get, it'll have you anxious. You'll lose sleep if you aren't careful. Just, just get your eyes, turn it off. Turn, listen to something else. You know, turn some music on. There's some awfully good Christian music around. There's some good Christian music around. So, so just go there instead of, my goodness, we can't fix the stuff that's going on, right? Put our eyes on eternity. I'm looking forward. You know, I get to see my mom one of these days. I, I, there's all kinds of people I'm looking forward to getting to know. People that I barely miss. You know, I barely got to know my dad. Barely got to know him. Man, I can't wait. 
if I can get him off uh, uh, out of, of conversation with Daisy, because I figure they've been busy since they, she's been up here. I mean, it's, you know, there's so much to look forward to in eternity. And, and so we've got to, that, that's what he's saying here. You know, set your hope fully on the grace. You, you know, we can, we can put a lot of hope in this world. There's a lot of stuff that we can put stock in. If you're, th- you, you know the stock market went further down today than it's ever gone in a day? Boy, they'll turn your world upside down if there's where your hope is. You, you know, it'll make you nervous. Maybe I brought it up because it made me nervous. I don't know today. But, but, the, but, but you know, when I think through that and, and, and my heart, uh, I get a little nervous about it, God reminds me, wait a minute, I got you. I had you before there was a stock market, and I'll have you when the stock market is something way in the past. Think about that. So, so we gotta, we got to put our hope fully in, in the grace that, that Christ is making available to us. And, and, and so we've got to have an eye on eternity. Now, here's the thing. Here's one that, that, that really gets me. I think it's, it's, a, it's a, a rubber meeting the road kind of thing. It's in verse 14. As obedient children... Do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. Do you know what it's talking about? Obedience. It's talking about obedience. It's talking about doing what you know God wants you to do without having, even knowing the entire picture, without knowing the whole plan, just knowing that God is on the scene and he says, trust me and obey me, and you do. That's what he's saying. Just do that. Just follow that. Now, now, here's the thing that dawned on me as I was pondering this, this, this day, today, this afternoon. I realized that, that I will only effectively be able to obey God to the degree I understand what God wants in my life. I will only understand what God wants in my life to the degree that I know and, and study and apply His Word. I will only know and understand his word to the degree that I spend time in the word. Back to where I was a while ago. you got to read the word of God. You've got to study the word of God. You've got to ask God to give you understanding of the word of God. And to do that requires time with him. You can't obey him if you don't know what he wants of you. You cannot obey him if you don't understand his heart and his character. And the only way you're going to get that is through his word, either reading his word, hearing his word that is taught in and, and, and messages and in Sunday school classes or, or, or studies of whatever degree you put it. We've got to have time with God and his word. Folks, it's, it's simple stuff. It, it has turned into some kind of complicated mess, it seems. And we don't have to make it such a mess. It's just a matter of obeying who God is. You see, sometimes I believe people might get caught up into believing that, well, I've got to get a lot of stuff together before I can start applying Christian principles. Folks, I, I tell you what, we all go to hell if that happens because there's so much to get and so much to understand and embrace. We'll never figure it out. We just need to be simple and trusting who God is and obeying what he shows us and follow him one step of the time uh, of the way, each step of the way. Folks, I don't know what tomorrow holds. I don't know even if tomorrow will get here, but I know he will, and I know he'll hold me. I know he's got me. I know that he's got you if we just trust him. And in the meantime, from now till he steps down out of glory, he wants us to be a holy people. Not a big mess. I, I'm burdened. As a pastor, I'm burdened, man. I, I, just watching what has happened in the realm of the church, the church world, these, this last two or three decades, it's, it's mind-blowing. What, what the church has become. I, I mean, and it's encouraging. I tell you what, folks, this is Thursday night. Look around. It's pretty encouraging. We live in a small town, and I promise you, I've done this many times in big old Charleston and can't get even half this many people to a revival service. This is really, really encouraging. God's working. God's moving. He'll do that if we will obey Him. If we'll obey Him. If we'll just trust him, if we'll just intentionally follow him, 
if we'll purpose to, to have enough balance in our lives that he's not balanced right out and that he's the center of who we are. It, it'll, it'll be an amazing thing. And if we'll just have the gall to obey what he tells us, think of that. Now, he, here's a, a thing. That I, I like this. Um, verse 15. Verse 15 is one of, one, one of those amazingly challenging verses. Not in a bad way. I just love it. Uh, for, for people who think, well, I, I had holy stuff there. This says, just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. Any questions? <laughs> Pretty well settles it to me. He says to be holy. Wonder what my goal is. Be holy. That's exactly what. But you know what? He's told me over and over again. He reminds me on a regular basis, boy, you can't do it. You got to lean on me. And that's where we fail. You see, we try and do it our own selves. We try. Lord, just tell me what all the rules are. Give me all the hoops that I can jump through them. Tell me exactly the regiment, and I'll start my little. At, at, at our church, we call it the, the the Nazarene march. You know, we just start doing our little Nazarene Nancy and Nazarene Tommy thing, and that ain't it. It's not about all that that hog work. By the way, Jesus is Nazarene, but. I mean, just saying. You guys will catch up when we all get there and we all Nazarene. You laugh now. <laughs> anyway, it's not about all, I mean, it's just about trusting. You, you, here's the point. He has no intention that we go it alone. That's the point. Say Amen. He has no intention of leaving you alone. Deuteronomy 31.6 says, Be strong and courageous. You know why? Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. You know why? For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So when he says, Be holy as I'm holy, I'm saying, Lord, go I'm up but you got to drive I don't know what to do I've got to just trust in you and he's saying that's exactly what I want in you you just trust me I've got this I'll make you as holy as you can be as as holy as I can make you if you'll just trust me and don't worry about all that other stuff you just trust me and I'll do in you what needs to be done you see what I'm saying God's called us to keep our white box clean and we can't do it because there's mud everywhere. But he has a power watching us on a regular basis, keeping them clean. You see what I'm saying? It, it's got to be intentional. It's not, it's not, you know cars nowadays. Have you seen those commercials where you're standing in your driveway and your car pulls itself into the, to the garage? Man, I want one of those. I mean, and just imagine, okay, kids are not being, I don't know, maybe they still are, but I hear rumors that kids are not being taught cursive, you know, because they don't use it and all that. That's an argument, right? Well, I understand cars will parallel park for you now, so I guess that won't be part of the driving test now. <laughs> you, you know, think about that. So anyway, I, and that's not, that, that won't get you to heaven or anything, I just... <laughs> It's just kind of a, a thought. Uh, but, but the thing is, God, we, we, God wants us to intentionally live this life. He wants us to, 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 to be purposeful. And, and if all I do, think about it, if, if all I do as a preacher is think church, how about the guy that's an alcoholic that lives down the street? Or, or the drug addict that's laying under a bridge somewhere? Or, or, or living in the house next door. Or the, or the person who walks in the door, and I'm so caught up in the, in the clouds that I can't see where I used to be. Think about that. See, that's balance. That's being open to what God wants in us. I don't want to get so separated. Jesus was not 
And if anybody was in tune to the Father, he was. And he was not so out of touch with the world that he overlooked prostitutes and drunkards and tax collectors. He had it, right? So, so we've got to understand that. And, and, and we've got to keep our eye on what eternity's about. Because I, have you ever, you ever been disappointed? If, if you're younger, maybe you haven't. Well, hang on. It's coming. You're going to get disappointed. And, and I can't promise you it'll only be one time. It might be a number of times. It might be over and over. But our God is still able. And if, if we'll just trust him, he's capable of holding us. We've got to keep an eye on eternity. We've got to be willing to obey him. We, we've got to trust him. And then we've got to be able to remember, it's easier to obey God when I know I'm not walking alone. It's easier to do that when I know that I'm not alone. And, and then there's one other thing. You see, I've got, to, I've got to not allow myself to become so comfortable in this world that it's more important to me than the next world. Verse 17 says, since you call on a father who judges each man's work impartially. Catch this. Now this is, this is not a, a multiple choice thing. This is a directive for our lives. Okay? Live your lives as strangers here in reverent fear. Live your lives as strangers in this world. Denise and I, this past whenever it was, I'll say September, we went to Myrtle Beach. The first time we went to the beach was right the, the, right the first year, I guess, we were married. I had never, I grew up here. I had never been to the ocean, never seen the ocean until we were married. I was, what was, how old was I, babe? Please help me just say it. I don't know. 23, 2. Never seen the ocean. Talk about secluded, right? Just that, I never, and the first time we went to the beach, she was pregnant with their son, and it was Virginia Beach. Had a blast, except we couldn't do anything. Everything made her so sick. It was terrible. <laughs> I mean, she knows it, though. So, I mean, we, we went to Bush Gardens and couldn't ride anything. Because everywhere you went, you had to be so tall and you can't be pregnant. It's like... These people saw us coming. They saw us coming. We didn't drink. We, I mean, we couldn't. And, and then we went to, the only place, we went to Williamsburg. Well, you walk around pregnant. <laughs> that was it, you know. So, so then we hadn't been, and we've been, this year we'll be married 40 years. And, and this past year, we went to Myrtle Beach for the very first time ever by ourselves. Just us. Amazing thing. Now, I said all of that because of this. We have a little thing, that, and our kids kind of make fun of us. But even if we are going to stay in a motel or a hotel, whatever you call it, overnight, we unpack. We, we, we pull the drawer, the, the dresser open, and take the stuff out of the suitcase. Now, we might not if we're, we're late getting in and early getting out. We, we, you know, but if we're going to be there for a while, we unpack. But now, needless to say, in Myrtle Beach, we're going to be there several days. We unpack. I mean, it is, I've got a place for my shoes, my, my underwear, my t-shirts, my, uh, my shorts, my this, my that, everything, and, and, and in the, the, the closet, everything's hung up. I mean, I don't want to be digging around all week in a suitcase. It just drives me crazy. But the fact of the matter is, it's still not home. It's just not home. It's just like, okay, it's comfortable, it's nice, everything's wonderful and all that stuff. There's a place for everything, everything is place and all that stuff, but it's still not home. But you know what? Neither is home. It's still not home. There's coming a day we're going to walk on golden streets. There's not going to be one thing that's going to hinder us from praising and worshiping and experiencing peace that we've never experienced before. We've got to be very careful not to get too comfortable in this world. That's what, what Peter's saying here. We've got to live as, we are, as if we are strangers 
And this means that, that we don't need to have fun, we don't need to enjoy, we can't have peace, we can't have a, a, a nice life. Absolutely doesn't mean that at all. But we just got to be reminded and stay in tune. There's more. There's more to come. And that's the life I want to live. That's the life God's called us to live. Folks, I believe that's what revival is about, is to be reminded of that. Wait a minute. This is, this is not just, oh, let's go through the motions and have a church service and do some great music and, and, do all, and, and have nice warm fuzzies and we go home and nothing. No. God wants to remind us. He's called us to a holy life. You know what the world needs right now? God's people who are called by His name to humble themselves. Right? Turn from their own wicked ways. What in the world is God's people doing wicked ways? What, is, what can that mean? Other than we've lost sight of what holiness is about. we got to get in tune to holiness. Uh, folks, you know what the Word tells us? Without it, we ain't seeing God. We, we're not seeing Him. If, if we purpose or intentionally don't follow him in the path that he shows us that we ought to be following him. It's just very practical. It's not all just, God's not just about opening clouds and zapping us and all. You know, it's, I mean, he can do that. Of course he can. But it's not about that. It's about a very practical experience of God. Here I am. And he don't want to do one thing in you that you're not willing to let him do. Nothing. He's not going to force himself in the least on you. You can slam any door on God you want to any time. Folks, the best thing we got going for us is the doors will open. And he gave us the capacity to let him in. So I guess there's where I need to stop. Do you need to work out any of that stuff? Are you playing any kind of game? Are you trying to be holy on yourself? Or are you not even worrying about it? Are you not even thinking about it? Is it, well, I'm, I got saved, bless God. I come to church, I pay my tithe. I love the pastor for the most part. No, I'm just kidding. I, by the way, I love your pastor. I just, and I'm not just blowing smoke there. I just enjoy being with the guy. He's just a joy to be around. I, I love that. I, but, and it's not about all that. It's about being absolutely, completely, totally humbled to Him and allowing Him to be God, Lord of your life. Do you have a phone? I suspect this girl's always got a phone. Let's stand, could we?